will help guide you for the submission of the final version. So if you have any questions about my comments, just let me know because sometimes I, I didn't know how to explain what I meant. So there's either there's going to be yellow highlights, which just flags some kind of error. And I don't have a system. I didn't have a system. So you're either going to see yellow highlights or whatever color you see as yellow and little text box comments. So the text box, little it looks like a little bubble. Those have actual typed up comments, whereas the highlights are just me flagging like spelling, punctuation, verb conjugation, those types of things. So that's, you get that's what you'll see. Sorry, did you get mine? Did you put it in the Dropbox? I believe so. I you said you, you're handing it back, right? So you don't have anything in the Dropbox. I'm gonna drop it in there. I'm gonna drop it. see it under anything. Are you right? Are you right? Yeah. Did you do the fifth confirmation that they need? The what? Sorry? <laughs> There's like a half dozen confirmations to submit something. Is there I don't I don't get I don't get to see any of the buttons you all see as students. I can, I can only Close imagine. Back. I think I think there's three because you technically like you have to go into the box, then drop the file, submit, and then confirm the submission. So yeah. Okay, I literally just see the timestamp of when it was submitted. That's all I get yeah. on my end. And then we get emails saying, "Hey, it was confirmed or not confirmed that it went through." I'm like, okay. I mean. I, I, I guess maybe it's better to have too many than not enough. I don't know. That seems a little excessive, but I don't know how much of that is programmed into D2L anyways. Well, they're stressing out over this whole thing right now. Um, as an example, because I know it came up, I asked a question about the whole, if we had any kind of, um, so to speak, surveys or information to confirm what we were going on about. I actually have it where it's a citation. I actually literally put it in the writing, but I'm expecting obviously not to have had to read the citation. Ironically, is it something you're going to look for? Like, um, in my case, it's the American Sociology Association from 2021. It was a paper that was written in 2004 related to like the subsection I was talking about. But like it was set quoted in the 2021 source. Yeah. Then that's fine. Yeah, I, I literally, I uh, quoted a, a statement made by them, as it were. So well, honestly, technically in the writing, it's there. So if we actually had to hand it in, you'd see this citation underneath it. But I, I, I'm assuming that through a presentation of this sort that we're not necessarily going to be spouting off the citation in the presentation. No, not in your presentations, no. Don't worry about it. And I had already said that. Just say, according to your primary source, I don't need secondary and third sources for a an oral presentation. All right, we ready to go? Yeah. Your all of your expressions tell me the answer to that is not <laughs> at all. We don't want to do this. Okay, so we have groups two and four that are going to present. So we'll have Beth, Jesse, and Sam presenting affirmative for um, their group of three. So it's going to be about 10 minutes. Then we'll have group four present all of their arguments up to 15 minutes there. Then the break for them to confer with their teammates. Okay, sorry, that was me. And then um, up to 10 minutes for the rebuttal. So that'll take up the full time. So the rest of you are just like really happy participants and, and audience members. Enjoy what, what the groups are going to present, right? I love presentations. I know that's not everyone's feeling, but I'm sorry. 
All right, so I will okay. let group two take it away whenever. Pardon? I'm tipping on Java over here, that's all. Okay, group, I'm just making sure. Okay, and if I, for some reason, Audrey, uh, Audrey, sorry, I, that's the first time ever I read it. Beth, Jesse, or Sam, I'll try and mute anyone if there's some kind of issues, but otherwise you guys can just keep your mic, mics open and I will close mine so that you guys can focus. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay, hi, we're group two and we'll be arguing in favor of social media improving human interaction. Human interaction has been changing drastically as a result of technological advances. In the early 1990s, human interaction was impacted by the introduction of flat rate long distance plans. People could now talk to their friends and families at any time of the day for as long as they wanted. This was the catapult that influenced an increase in positive human interaction. The easy access, affordability, and the joy that was felt connecting with family and friends became the societal norm by the end of the decade. However, the communication experience was limited to voice and whether both parties were available at the same time. Moving forward, the introduction of the internet was another pivotal moment that impacted human interactions in a positive way. The internet allowed for the creation of social media. According to an article in the Journal of Biological Conservation, social media refers to web-based services that allow individuals, communities, and organizations to collaborate, connect, interact and build a community by enabling them to create, co-create, modify, share, and engage with user-generated content that is easily accessible. Social media has continued to contribute positively to human interaction. In our presentation, we will demonstrate the ways in which social media has improved human interaction through increasing communication, information sharing, and creating worldwide communities that otherwise would not exist. Social media has impacted the way that we communicate with friends and family worldwide. Where we once were limited to phone calls, we now have alternatives such as video calls, direct messaging, photo sharing, and commenting. Social media allows us to communicate with people worldwide without the added costs of long distance fees. It allows us to make internet-based calls that include both sound and video increasing the personal connection between friends and family. It was a learning curve that people embraced this last year, gathering while being physically apart for celebrations such as Thanksgiving, Christmas, and births of new babies. Video calling a family member that was isolated in a long-term care facility to check in on them and to share conversation became a common practice. Families are no longer limited to face-to-face -face visits annually when they are separated by distance or continents. Connections between people who live far apart now happen at their convenience. It could be daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on what's happening in each other's schedule. Families can connect on social media platforms such as Facebook, Family Leaf, Google Hangout, and online gaming sites that are accessible for only their family. Recently, online bingos, Kahoots, Scrabble, and even movie platforms have allowed multiple people to participate in events simultaneously. This gives the interaction a more authentic, genuine, and private nature to satisfy the basic human need for connection. This affordable and easy to use tool keeps families connected and keeps communities connected. Social media is increasing the size of our communities. It allows users to join groups based on shared interests. Introducing users to people from a wide range of socioeconomic backgrounds. Many platforms have a wide variety of topics and some even screen for interests. When you register so that it can help narrow down possible connections for you. With free will, you get to choose who and how you want to be interacted, leaving a sense of autonomy. Social media is allowing people to connect with people they otherwise would never have met. Individuals can make new connections with other people based on their interests in learning and experiencing other cultures, traditions, and languages. From learning more about your own heritage, 
to expanding your cultural awareness. Social media connects people across the globe and brings a sense of unity. Social media outlets such as blogs, Instagram accounts allow people to interact on an inter interest base. For example, connecting virtually with someone in Italy to learn to speak Italian is a valuable experience that many are taking advantage of, especially in the last year. It has become so apparent that connection, virtual or in-person, adds value to anyone who can experience it. Reaching out of our own environment to share experiences is a positive connection between people. Social media has had a positive impact on human interactions in remote areas, allowing users access to community resources, medical support, and increasing communication. Communities that are remote in nature, such as our Northern Indigenous communities, have benefited from social media in personal and professional domains. Professionally, they have been able to enhance medical support and care for members of their community by participating in telemedicine and in virtual care. Occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, physiotherapists, and social workers adapted their care models to include the use of technology. This allows for more continuity of care and increases accessibility for all populations. Communities have been able to reach out and collaborate on business plans to enhance the well being of communities and its members. Important community businesses, such as uh, council meetings and presentations, can occur with software such as Zoom and Teams. This has allowed for government to continue to operate while following our recent stay at home orders. Personally, Members have been able to connect with others who share the same values and interests and form virtual communities of support. Smaller communities benefit from social media by sharing their beliefs and way of living with other communities across the nation. Social media has created awareness of issues that people, uh, sorry, awareness of issues that are occurring in real time and give the opportunity to present different points of view. People can share their point of view on issues that matter to them and their community. Without social media, the urgency of clean drinking water would not have been common knowledge, nor would it have it allowed for people to collaborate solutions and put motions forward to create change. Movements and social causes such as Bell Let's Talk campaign created by a Canadian telecommunication company in an attempt to raise awareness and combat the stigma of mental health across the country. The uptake and response of participants create a sense of unity, and that is what is needed when supporting mental health. In conclusion, social media has changed the way we communicate entirely, enhancing human interaction overall. First, by increasing communication over long distances. Second, by introducing users to different cultures and beliefs. And third, by making communication more convenient overall. Social media has become so prevalent among the masses that nearly everyone in some way uses it in some way for communication. It has enhanced our communications even in the midst of a pandemic by changing the way we interact, giving users the ability to exchange messages, participate in video conferencing, and allow networks to communicate when they would otherwise be unable to. This has had a major impact impact on those who are under lockdown alone. Video and photo sharing continues to allow users to let their family and friends view their daily activities despite lo lockdown protocols. Effectively, social media is bringing a sense of community and inclusion to those who are isolated due to COVID-19. Social media has become a normal part of our everyday lives, making constant communication with friends and family possible. It brings people together and allows them to experience new cultures and ideas, all from the comfort of home, improving human interaction through inclusion. You guys are like halfway done. Okay, thank you to group two. We'll go right into group four. So if anyone has any questions or comments, keep them till the end so that we don't mess too much with the flow. Um, so whenever you guys are ready, group four, it's 
It's your turn. All right. Um, well, our group forum will be presenting the opposing view, which is social media has not improved human interactions. And first, I'd just like to touch on social media as a whole and state that like everything else, social media can be good in moderation. Uh, but in today's society, it's anything but that. A National Education Association study from 2018 shows that 95% of teens aged 12 to 19 were considered active on social media. This is resulting in a dependence as we see it, uh, as social media becomes a more prevalent uh, communication method. We can see that real human connections are being replaced by virtual connections. And from this research and study, we postulate that social media negatively impacts social interactions by creating a virtual barrier that transfers to the physical realm. This shows in a, in a decrease in face-to-face -face communication skills developed from a young age as kids start to use social media more. The development of mental health issues through continual use of social media, resulting in significant impacts of face-to-face -face communication and a rise in cyberbullying fueled by social media use that transfers to issues in the physical realm. Bayers and Stephanie will be presenting these supporting statements. Devin will be, Devin will be presenting our rebuttals and Ike and will be presenting our closing statements. I'll now hand it over to Bayers and Stephanie for our supporting statements. Decrease in face-to-face -face communication is developed from a young age. Social media has decreased the amount of face-to-face -face interactions, quality of face-to-face -face interaction, also decrease in language skills. First, social media has led us to fewer interactions with the people we associate with. Majority of people have access to social media at any time they please via their smartphones. So this worsens as more people acquire smartphones since it has become more prevalent. Social media has made people have tendency to want to interact with people online rather than in person because it has made the process simpler. When there is a simpler process for things to be done easier and more efficiently, it attracts people to give it a Try. Although it may be viewed as a positive change, this has caused more people to become more antisocial than ever before. Studies have shown that people in both in similar age groups and with people that are in other age groups. The world has changed into a society that is complacent sitting behind our computer screens. Social media is the leading cause of this complacency. This same study has shown that relationships that form completely online are becoming increasingly common. In a study done in 2002, 1,501 youths were surveyed about their relationship that they had made online. 2% of these students admitted to having a romantic relationship with someone purely online that they had never met in person. This says a lot about the relationship that younger generations are forming with one another. This study shows that people tend not to grasp the, the issue at hand and the impact that a lack of face-to-face -face interaction can have with one another. The number of face-to-face -face interactions is not only thing that has been negatively impacted. The quality of these decreasing interactions is suffering as well. People are not having these intimate conversations and personal interactions with each other anymore. People instead have turned to the internet to take away some of the nervousness that some may find in trying to start a relationship with another person. Social media is a driving force behind these changes. So then Tardanico brings up an interesting idea that people need a new golf course. What she means is that people need a new place in business to conduct a face-to-face -face interaction. It is used, used to be that business could be discussed on a golf course. However, these new sources of online social media have begun to ruin the business relationships as well. People need to focus on getting into more personal relationships, which will lead to more trusting and open connections in the future. Also, people tend to forget that the English language is neglected while online. People use shorthand and shortened versions of the words themselves in order to convey a message quicker. This does not negatively affect how we communicate because written language tends to be easier to decipher. The issue that people will run into is when they try to integrate these forms of communication into the language that is used every day. People cannot properly convey what they need to these days without using some sort of speech that is colloquial or not in a reputable dictionary. It leads to people to try and use slang terms that social media has helped develop, form, and popularize into the mainstream. This has shaped a society that is no longer functioning properly in social situations. Often people will seem awkward or out of place in these situations, and it has been affecting society in a negative way. Now, I'll pass the next supporting statement to Bayrus. 
Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. So social media websites and platforms are causing frequent anxiety and depression, which are all worsening human interactions in the physical world and affecting the way we think and behave in life. So to begin with, the research conducted from the University of Pittsburgh studied 1,787 U.S. young adults between the ages of 19 to 32 regarding social media use and depression. Well, the questionnaire asked about the 11 most popular social media platforms at the time, which were Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, Snapchat, Reddit, Tumblr, Pinterest, Wine, and LinkedIn. The results showed that the average participants were visiting social media websites over 30 times per week and spent over an hour on social media per day. One quarter of these young adults displayed signs of anxiety and depression, and those who frequently check social media were found to be 2.7 times more likely to develop depression. And those who use the most platforms had 3.3 times the odds of high levels of social isolation and anxiety symptoms than the other participants. This research was conducted from October to November 2014, and of course, the numbers have been growing steadily since then. So now let's look at 2020, when the School of Psychological and Cognitive Sciences in Beijing studied 512 Chinese college students by surveying them regarding the social media effects on, on the COVID-19 stressor, secondary traumatic stress, depression, and anxiety. As expected, results from regression analysis indicated that a higher level of social media was associated with worse mental health. More exposure to disaster news via social media was associated with greater depression for participants with high but not low levels of disaster stressor. Moreover, path analysis showed negative effect mediated the relationship of social media use and mental health and concluded that the disaster stressor may be a risk factor that amplifies the deleterious impacts of social media use on depression. This research proves that social media use causes social isolation, depression, stress, and anxiety problems, which can all lead to major communication problems, such as causing a disruption in verbal and nonverbal behaviors, influencing and reducing people's confidence to talk and socialize with each other throughout the society. Well, now uh, social, let's talk about how social media can cause cyberbullying and create negative psycho, uh, psychological effects on human interactions. As we all know, the act of cyberbullying is generally defined as a process in which you, social media platforms and websites are used to intentionally hurt, threaten, or embarrass someone. According to the National Crime Presentation Council report, above 40% of U.S. teenagers have been reported being cyberbullied and that half of the total number of suicides among these teenagers have been related to different types of cyberbullying. In 2016, the School of Communication and Information from Rogers University interviewed 32 high school students from the U.S. Northern East who had witnessed cyberbullying incidents within the past six months. The main purpose of the study was to use a human-computer interaction perspective to explore how newer mobile app features influence cyberbullying in the lives of teens. The majority of these students said that cyberbullying happens beyond platforms like Facebook and Twitter, and that besides supporting social interactions, these platforms are most likely including multiple features that could be associated with cyberbullying and abuse. These features include the prominence of visual data, perceived ephemerality of the content, hyperlocal interaction, and anonymity. For example, according to the participants, while the app Ogle does not restrict communication within a certain geo radius, its feature connects users with other users from the same school and nudge them into interacting within specific hyperlocal communities. Similarly, while audio remains a prominent interaction mechanism on Skype, video interactions and its abuse is becoming more and more common. Students concluded that cyberbullying can lead to spreading rumors, stalking, and threatening their peer uh, individual friends. This study shows that social media is causing cyberbullying and neg negatively affecting the lives of many young adults. They can all cause psychiatric and psychomatic disorders and negatively affect the way that people interact with each other and cause the victims to be ignored, disrespected, picked on, or otherwise hassled. Now may I ask Akimini to present our closing statement conclusion. Thank you. Considering the points debated on this subject, it is obvious that social media has not improved human interaction. This is made clear by the fact that there is a huge, there is a huge decrease in the face-to-face -face interaction skills, negative effects on mental health, and there is continuous rise of bullying. Due to the virtual barrier built by the social media, creating an unhealthy satisfaction through its various experiences, and this is affecting.
I think the physical realm, not to denounce social media, but to be convinced that it affects social interaction. We should not let social media replace our quality time with friends and family. Let's not let social media control us. Rather, let's control it. Thank you. We're like 80% done, people. This is exciting, no? Very exciting to hear other people talk. So I, I really like these. You both did really good jobs, like the preparation, the structure, the logic is all there. So now as your two groups, you're going to specifically talk about what the other group said. So either bring it back to a point that you've already stated, or maybe you already came prepared with potential um, rebuttals for what was specifically said from the other team. So you'll have 10 minutes to discuss as groups um, how you're going to counter those arguments. So I'll put you back in your rooms. That work. Everybody's in their room. Okay. So while everybody's bored and hanging out and waiting, just a fun little comment. I won't say who or what group. Somebody mentioned Bell Canada was Canadian. Eh, wrong answer. It's actually American. I wouldn't have caught that either. <laughs> That's why there's Bell Atlantic, Bell Verizon. If anything, it's hilarious because a lot of our industry now is actually owned and operated by American counterparts. Granted, well, like initially created externally as well? Yeah. Like never, never belonged to Canada? <laughs> no, not the company Bell Canada, no. What they do is they put the, it, it's all in advertising, right? They attach the name Canada, like look at Walmart. Walmart's got a Canadian leaf in its sign, but it's not Canadian. It's an American run company. Granted, they have to follow the rules and the bylaws and everything that's followed through by our governments, right? But technically what ended up happening is when Harris many years ago started selling off things like the hydro poles and the telephone lines that was owned by the government of Canada telecommunications, power, electricity, all that. Then they started privatizing it all. Now, Bell Canada, which is ironic, if you go and get another phone company, technically it's Bell Canada that is having to go out and repair those lines because they own them now. I did not know that. Like the reason why our communications is actually the highest, like, for when you say have a cell phone, you pay a package fee for whatever it is, doesn't matter what company. There's a, the reason why is because we are so small in population and so spread out. Our population isn't, you know, it, it's total is this, you know, New York state, right? So there's a reason why Canadians pay higher prices for everything because the mass majority of our services are four and five times more expensive to get to everybody because everybody lives so far apart from each other aside from major centers. So what do they do? They charge you astronomical prices to be out in the boomies, right? Well, fact, fun fact of the day, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, fun is relative, but still, no deal with. It's kind of why, too, it's so hard for you to fight to get insurance. You get insurance, say, for your car, and you get an accident, and it takes forever for them, if they even decide to pay you out. It's because it's all privatized, right? The more they have to pay out, the more money they're losing. Whereas before it was government owned. So as long as the cops and everybody said, no, nope, you're not at fault, said person, okay, done. Paid out whatever standard fee it was and that was the end of it. But now it's a big song and dance and a big fight. And it's cheaper to actually go to court for them and drag it out. And most people just give up because they can't afford the court costs. <sighs> Praise Harris. Praise Harris. <laughs> made me think something. Oh, I had something else to say. I should, I should have written it down. I totally agree. <laughs> Any questions about anything <laughs> while I try and think of what I wanted to tell you all? The crowd's doing an amazing job and yeah, keep same. up the great effort. Absolutely.
absolutely. That that was like goes without saying. I didn't think you needed that, but yes, you're doing an excellent job as little um, Hollywood squares. We're little minions in the courtyard. Okay, you guys have essays and portfolios left. I don't think you had to do either of those. Shoot. We'll find my sticky note. Okay, well, when I think of it, I'll let everyone know at the same time. What was I doing when I was thinking of it? Nope, still can't think of it. Now's your chance. Questions about anything? I don't even know if you're all there, but anybody have any questions? I'm good. I'm good. I'm here. I'm good. <laughs> no question. Okay. All right, then. I'm all good. I guess now is coffee break time for you for you all. Yeah. You're still. Oh, some of us are. No, I'll all have her. My cup sent you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the pot myself. Mine died. Yeah. How are how's going in your other courses? Good? No? Yes? Maybe? Stressful. <laughs> Stressful. Is it just sure. being online? Is it assignments? Is it a little bit yeah. of all of it? Everything, all the ones like right here. I'll give you guys a sneak peek of what I have in front of me. So everything, that's all my classes and what's due for them. So it's to keep organized. There's my to-do list up there and stuff. And here are formulas and all the stuff I got to make sure I keep up with. This is a specific formula that I have to learn and a calendar for myself. Things of what goes on and how I try to keep up with everything. So I'm, if I miss I, something. I have sticky notes everywhere, so I understand. But I lose my sticky notes, so that doesn't help me. Too Sometimes much. the sticky notes drop. And you know, you just see the sticky note later and it's like, I missed it. I missed it. Or you remember it and you just forget about it. But it happens. And um, do you have, a, do, like, just generally, does anyone have a lot of, Final exams. I really don't know how it works being yeah, fully online now. For me, it's like half and half. But um, in my case, especially being law, there it's hilarious. You know, the, the exams he's been giving, their take home, and you have set amount of time to do them, which is all fun and good. But because they're take home, they're not multiple choice. Nope. Um, they're long answers. So you're literally submitting like six to eight pages of text. And uh, it, it's like a needle in the haystack. Yep. Right? Something that's so obscure that you would never ever actually have on a real test. And you're just kind of going. Do you have uh, like case studies as well? Or is it really like find know, the yeah. article yeah. of this law and apply it to something kind of deal? Well, that was the tests. Basically, there was almost three parts to each one. It was redefine it in your words. Uh, part two is, you know, how does it apply to a court case? And then part three is like take a current real life issue and slap that law to it. Uh, so as an example, <laughs> we were doing property laws, you know, so you'd have to redefine it in your own words, then turn around and then, you know, pull up a case file if you could find one. And then turn around and say, "This is how they used it in this in this case," because obviously it's not in normal English. And then turn around and, as an example, um, women didn't have rights to property. More often than not, you know, 18, 1900s, they were property. They were given away to a wealthy family. Most of the time, it created ties between the families. Most of the time, it was there was a dowry associated with the woman, just because they felt like. And I'll be blunt. Back then, they were dead weight when it comes to finances so it was a burden to actually take that woman on so that's why dowries were associated to the women 
because they were basically the man the father was saying here take her I'll, I'll even pay you basically to take her right and then if the woman had properties of any kind it was transferred to the husband immediately upon marriage she doesn't retain it she doesn't keep it um if the husband was to die again nothing goes back to her it would all go to the firstborn and if it was a female it would go to the firstborn son so yeah there case law had changed it judges finally started saying enough's enough and in turn created basically what's case law is basically when they kind of say you know what this is our interpretation of it but it stinks so we're actually going to go this way so then lawyers could bring it in saying no 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 this judge said this you know that you got to follow or have a good reason to go against what he's saying right or she so over time that's actually how women were able to can you know maintain property or even own anything or otherwise you know like everything voting and whatnot it, so yeah, no, it, the tests are very long, um, but whereas then you have last semester, I found everything was very, every week there was a half a dozen things. Whereas this semester, there's no room for a mistake because a project's worth 40% of your grade. And I know this class has one as an example, but the other classes, it's like, there's four things total over the whole semester. So you'd have like a couple small assignments worth smaller amounts, like 10% or so. Uh, a midtermish type test. Um, in the case of like my communications course, it's there's three small assignments each, 10% each. There was a test for 25%. She loves her multiple choice in that case. Uh, three identical answers minus one small like the or and, and it totally changes the way the word, <laughs> the answer could be. And then in her case, instead of a test, it's an actual, um, you're taking like a half dozen different principles or issues within your course that you've learned and you're actually putting them into this project and then handing that in instead as an exam. With my law course, it's there's a final take-home exam. Uh, history, I believe it's a final take-home exam as well. Um, but yeah, I find this semester it's more of, you, know, you don't have as many assignments, but whatever assignments you do have, A, you don't want to lose that sticky note because that could be a quarter grade going out the window. So it's kind of hard to make that stuff back up again. I do find there's a difference just generally in, first of all, one semester to the, the next, there's differences in assignments and weight distribution. And also, I, like I did my undergrad in law as well. So knowing that like arts and humanities, the way that our exams and our questions are structured is very different than like a science-based yeah. course because I find generally from what I'm hearing from students science-based courses have a lot more like put it into practice like you have quiz this quiz that lab this lab like it's an unending list of things and then a humanities-based course social science they tend to have here write me three essays total for the entire course it's the, like the contrast is really like evident when you're comparing. I know it's different faculties, but George well, I mean, nodding because I when the, when you said I, the formula, I assumed it was some kind of math, physics, chem thing. All of the, all of this stuff, like I'm in chemistry, so we have chemistry labs, and just looking to the left, I have I have just a load of of lab after lab after lab so what happens is you do a lab and a week later for the same class he'll show you the calculations or what the calculation should be and then the week later it's due no class and no no, no same same class but introducing introducing the next lab so it's lab after lab after lab and in class what you're doing essentially is going through the calculations of what it is you're going to be calculating in that lab and you're just going through it as and there's no stop every day it's either you're doing the calculations for it or you're doing lab and i i myself the sticky note on my slab sheet here with with the due date and the time for it and then I go through the calculations myself and I read through the lab work which the lab work is not too hard but I am 
I, I may sl- what, for labs, you have to literally do investigations. Like when you when you're when you're watching the lab because you're not in class or you're not doing it yourself, he takes a video of what you're doing, whether he's filling the beaker with 40 milliliters and heating that beaker. You have to sit there and investigate how many milliliters is in and how many moles are in this content or whatever he's doing. Is he heating it up? Is he doing X, Y, Z with it? You're literally sitting there with the paper and going through and making sure you have every bit, every small tad bit of information. Because if you miss one thing, then you can throw yourself off for the rest of that lab, which has happened to me. And I've got a bad mark on that lab, but it will happen. And I've learned from my mistakes to say, all right, investigate the lab, do the lab work. And when the time comes for him to go over that lab and every every lab professor is different maybe they won't show you the calculations maybe they'll show you it but my one did i so i'll wait for him to show us the calculation then luckily he takes a video and posts it on d2o of what the calculations are and you still follow through which is good it's just the workload and having to go through each step of everything making sure you're doing the investigations in chemistry and that's just chemistry alone Math, no. It's formulas, formulas, limit functions, uh, implicit derivatives, linear approximation, differential, in inverse functions. You have to learn all of that, and it's just it's just a load. It's just a load that keeps coming. And those are just the two courses that I have in this course to to sum it all up. So I can't I can't compare myself to every other person who has four or five courses to keep up. <laughs> Mine, I'm getting used to it, and I've worked my way around how to organize myself that way. If that makes sense. Oh, it I, does. I, yeah, I was gonna say I think for me my biggest hurdle is the excessive reading. Uh, honestly, I'm never I I can sit there and honestly tell you with no word of a lie I have never read a book cover to cover when it comes to say fantasy novels or any kind of novels, even going through high school in advanced English, um, we had novels we were supposed to read. Yeah, I was notorious for skipping a half dozen chapters or finding crib notes that were like a 50th of what the book really was. And, you know, when you have to take 110 pages worth of legal case file and condense it into four, my brain starts to hurt. We all have our obstacles. It just depends on the, the field of the discipline. Everything the is... Yep. All right. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> I, feel the op- I feel the optimism. It's like a volcano overflowing in the background of you know it, San Francisco. It's counting down the minutes till this is officially over, right? Okay, so we will start again with group two since group four was last to talk. So group two, um, whenever you're ready, you're going to present your rebuttal for what group four presented. All right, well, um, in response to group four's first argument regarding a decrease in face-to-face interaction, we believe that face-to-face interaction has been negatively impacted over the last year, mainly due to COVID-19, social media, and the online tools that have allowed people to maintain communication despite these restrictions and have increased communication overall. For example, students in primary, middle, and high school are still attending schools, either online or in person, maintaining and increasing face-to-face interactions over Zoom in class that probably wouldn't have not been there if we didn't have those things. Also, face-to-face interaction and reading body language can be learned from your parents or siblings. This can be helpful for understanding nonverbal interactions. As you could learn when people are mad from like your mother um, looking at you for when you didn't do dishes or when your sister is, or your sibling is sad when you know she's looking down and all glum. And you can learn these from your siblings. Uh, Regarding their second point on mental health issues, there are many services that are available online 
to combat these issues, okay? Services are available to help users limit their screen time uh, and access to social media. For example, on Apple phones, uh, users can monitor their screen time and even schedule times to limit online interactions. Not only that, services for mental health, um, such as the Canadian Mental Health Association, are offer online support uh, for cognitive behavioral therapy or anxiety, uh, depression, and other mental health concerns. And this also includes counseling online. Teams and, Teams and Zoom have parental control settings that allow parents to monitor and control the access that their children have in using these services. Uh, regarding mental health issues, one in four people over their lifetime are affected despite the use of social media. And in the contrary, social media is now used as a method of support and simplifies accessing support services. Beth, you're muted. It can go 100% smooth, eh? <laughs> All right, so in terms of cyberbullying, it is not refutable that bullying, harassment, and other negative behaviors occur online as they occur offline. What can be discussed is what is happening to ensure people's safety when it, this occurs and what steps are people and society taking to reduce the frequency and to educate the users, and the answer is a lot. In Ontario alone, the government, along with various partners, have established curriculum for all grades, even JK and SK students. The overall focus is digital citizenship, which includes safety training, responding to bullying threats and sexual invitations. It includes ethical decision making and accountability for your digital footprint. Social media is now intertwined into so many aspects of people's lives that this step is needed to allow for the positive aspects to shine through. Educating seniors has been another aspect of how to balance out pros and cons. Senior centers, libraries, and online platforms spend time training seniors on risks and benefits of internet and social media to arm them with the skills to ensure a positive online experience. Employers have set boundaries and expectations for staff around their social media use and have policies in place to ensure concerns are addressed appropriately and are backed by governing agencies such as the Human Rights Tribunal. In any invention or advancement in technology comes exploration and adjustment periods. We should remember that vehicles didn't have seatbelts until the 1960s and then it took until 1976 for it to be mandatory. And now 92% of people use seatbelts compared to 17% when the law was originally passed. So statistics from a 2009 general social survey on victimization reports show that 9% of adults with children in homes reported incidents of cyberbullying. The big numbers presented to us, such as 70%, 72% were hateful comment statistics, still represent 72% of the 9% reporting experience in bullying. This is not to take away from these negative experiences, but to reproportion the lens. Now for social media, the times are changing and laws are now including the cyber world in civil and in criminal law. These steps forward allow all citizens to continue to use social media for communication, for connecting with friends and family, and for expanding our interests and knowledge. Thank you. Uh, is that all? My turn? Cool. All right. So uh, my opposition, um, they touched very uh, briefly on the fact that uh, virtual barriers are a little bit of the thing that's keeping us safe from COVID-19. Um, but without the risk of uh, COVID taking up any more of our lives, I'd like to make this next point very short. Um, and that's that the only point that the only thing that will keep us safe from COVID-19 is personal accountability and medical advancements. Um, while it might seem like the right choice right now to use a virtual barrier is by no means a permanent solution. Um, and while the idea that it was kind of a knee-jerk reaction to go into this uh, virtual reality um, is understandable, 
Uh, the fact is that many people still live their lives the same way by maintaining their social groups, um, uh, maintain their professional lives by going to work, um, and they have kids and spouses that all do the same. Um, but without the uh, risk of this devolving into another COVID argument, I'd like to direct the class's attention to my opposition's thesis. Uh, the opposition's thesis revolves around the idea that social media has uh, improved uh, human interaction in a positive way. Um, and I believe that just not to be true. Uh, my first argument uh, for the reason why is uh, uh, revolving around a study uh, conducted by a very distinguished uh, psychology professor from the University of California. Um, so this professor, um, he's spent his whole life studying how the mind interprets communication. Um, and the conclusion that he came to is that only 7% of communication is verbal. Um, okay, which means that 93% of non-communication is verbal. And the fact is, is that when we're online, we just cannot communicate with our body language. Um, so this is going to result in situations that are often misread or misunderstood um, when trying to communicate online, whether you be um, trying to um, achieve some sort of cry for help or whether it even just be something a lot simpler, like um, just some humor being mistaken for a verbal attack. Um, as long as we spend the majority of our time communicating online, we simply just do not get the full picture. Um, and that goes uh, to speaking with mental health, uh, seeking mental health um, help as well. Um, when you go to seek mental health uh, in person, it's just much more effective. Um, and that's just how it is. Uh, um, and then I wanted to touch a little bit on the Bell's Let's Talk campaign. Uh, so my opposition uh, spoke a little bit about how um, there are a lot of positive um, initiatives going out there um, and Bell's Let's Talk campaign is uh, specifically focused on mental health. Um, and while it overall is a very positive thing to look at our mental health and always be assessing it while creating uh, ways to move forward and help it, um, it's very important to uh, look at Bell under a little bit more of a microscope. Um, the idea of Bell's Let's Talk is simply um, just a way of, to kind of save face in the public's eye. Um, and it's very likely that Bell's Let's Talk campaign would not exist without the Canadian government's um, um, help uh, with when it comes to incentives and tax breaks that are involved with um, this Bell's Let's Talk campaign. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to make the argument that if the government um, was not able to give them help and if there was no way to create profit from Bell, um, that they would never have created the Let's Talk campaign in the first place. Um, so social media does give us an easier alternative to connect, but it's important to remember that there are forms of connection um, before this, like telephone and obviously mail. If anybody had a pen pal long ago, we know that it is possible to contact with um, other cultures. So um, obviously social media is uh, the easiest choice to use because it's the path of least resistance. Um, however, it's important to address some negative sides of this as well. Um, creating a very large online community um, also allows us to be contacted by people who might have um, more negative um, intentions in mind. Um, so, you know, when I'm talking about that, I mean people who might be out there to lure you, people who may be out there to possibly scam you for some money. Um, and when it's very important to also note that when we're approach, approached by strangers online, um, that um, the only thing that we know about them is what their profile tells us. And that simply does not tell us their intentions or anything. So um, it's something that was passed down to us from generations before. And it's something that we still pass down to the generation below us. And it's to be very wary of strangers and people you don't know. Um, anybody with children would probably tell you that if some random person contacted them, their children online, that they would immediately want to know about it and they would probably try to shut it down as well. Um, another negative risk of uh, using social media would be exposure to images for body language and stuff like that. Um, they said that um, you can relate body images and bullying to what's happening now, but the truth is, is that um, we spend most of our majority on time and because of the algorithms and the data mining accomplished by, you know, say a platform like Facebook, uh, the things that we see are very um, related to the things that they think we like. Um, so, you know, mind you, if you spend all your time scrolling through your newsfeed, liking this and then liking that, you're more likely to see things that relate to that. Um, so this can relate to a very distorted view. Um, so when we're using social media, you know, um, it's, it's very, um, it's very important to realize that what we're seeing isn't the whole story. Um, and, you know, 
distorted views can relate directly back to our thesis um, when it comes to not being able to meet someone in the middle or you know when it comes to the physical realm you can't really um, achieve the same kind of communication that you could um, and also maybe find some sort of middle ground to possibly um, have your argument on um, so you know, also exposure to these images, um, you know, while, while it can be very appealing, the truth is seeing them all the time is very negative for our mental health and it can lead to very uh, negative body imaging as well as uh, eating disorders and stuff like that. Um, so just an example, uh, just as my very last talking point here, I just want to uh, give an example of a Instagram model. Um, she has over 30 million followers. Uh, she spends all of her time, you know, talking about um you know like parties things online uh or sorry like things that she does like uh you know like drinking on a yacht partying all these things uh she has 30 million followers okay and these followers are um uh, you know like young women young men and people of all ages um but they're seeing these people and they're saying oh hey um this is what i want to be okay now i want you to think about that 30 million followers um compared to alicia garza uh, okay, so Alicia Garza is a founding member of the Black Lives Matter community, uh, and she's a very active female activist uh, within that community. Uh, she has 169,000 followers, and honestly, that's just not good enough. Um, it, and it, it really talks about how um, we look at things. Um, you know, we just we're looking at them wrong, and social media is a very a very uh, big reason for that. They're just not showing us what we need to know in terms to make our lives better. Um, so I firmly endorse the idea that our ideas greatly influence our beliefs. Um, but in this example, it's very clear that our views are very misguided. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for listening to my arguments against social media. Um, I hope that my points have been clear in reiterating our thesis that social media negatively impacts social interactions by creating a virtual barrier that transfers to the physical realm. Um, I believe that a lot of points that I brought up mentioned that. And it's important to always remember when you're using social media, just what you're missing, really. Um, and when it comes to the physical realm, it's very important to realize how what you're missing is translating to your real life. Thank you. Okay, any comments? Feedback you'd like to provide in a constructive, positive, respectful way. Generally speaking, that went extremely well. Technology was like 99% on our side tonight. So that's a win right there. Um, you both took different approaches in the way that you like divided roles, the way that you presented your information and not one was better than the other. And every time I do, this is not the first time we do this particular topic, you all bring about such different perspectives that it's really interesting. And this is a super relevant topic to us right now, connecting online and everything. Um, so thank you to all of the presenters, debaters um, for tonight's debate. The thing that I had forgot, anyways, you guys were in breakout rooms and I kept saying I forgot about something and I remembered what it was. So for the debates, the first, like, it's done, guys, you can breathe. I mean, Teams two and four can breathe. Teams one and three, you guys got two more days of thinking about it. Um, so groups two and four, the last chunk, the last part of this particular assignment is the Google Docs, Google, Google Forms. Google Forms. So this is an evaluation of how you work together as a team and how you contributed to that team. It is a Google Form. And it, sh it looks like this. You'll all have to do this. There's no rush if you really want to reflect in my mind, it was, oh, you guys can take the last 10 minutes of class to do it. And if you want to do it now, go for it. But if you need to reflect and really think on it a little bit more, as long as you guys have these by the week done by the weekend, that's fine. Am I sharing the debate? So, oh my God, I lost my little square. Um, yeah, you're sharing it. Perfect. Thank you. So this is what it looks like. And I know that it's really weird. I... As a, as a me putting it together, it looked fine. And then I'm looking at this going, it's really confusing. I thought they'd be really long boxes. Oops. They're not. So they're, they have, like, it, it, there are text boxes when I'm expecting, like, a complete sentence, a couple sentences, but that's not the look you guys get. So if, if all that to say, if the Google form is not the method in which you want to submit the responses, um, it is available here as well. 
in uh, assignments, debates, criteria, all of the questions are in the PowerPoint as well as in the Google form. So if you want to do it in a Word document, like however you would like to present the answers, it doesn't matter to me. I just need you to answer the question. So whether it's in the group, in the Google form, which looks like this. So again, it doesn't look like you have a lot of space, but you do. They're tech, they're long answers. So you can do it this way or um, submit it, like just answer the questions from these. Or if you guys want me to put it. The, the like easy way to document. describe it is as you type in your answer, the form expands as your answer gets bigger. Yeah, but I'm like, yes, that's the way to explain it. But it throws, I know it throws me off when I'm answering because you can't go, I don't know if you can go back and forth. Anyways, if this format doesn't work for you, all of the same questions are here. So it's like six questions, it's not super complicated. So the questions are here, the Google form is here, the, the link to the Google form is here. I'm going to put it in the chat, I will put it on D2L. You'll have multiple ways to access the Google form if that's your preferred method. If it's not, the questions are here. You can email me the questions. You can put it in a Word document, put it in a Dropbox. Just reflect on the experience as a whole, um, the experience as a collaborative project, and also your contributions as a member of that group. That's the last piece. So sometime by the end of this week, complete that. But for those of you who presented tonight, I like to get, like, encourage you to do it now because it's still fresh, but take the time that you need to really um, formulate your responses. So that's going to be the last bit for both groups of uh, debates, whether it's tonight or Thursday. So you have access to that now. I would recommend for groups one and three to wait until you actually presented because there's still the piece of how you organize your rebuttal. Um, but yeah, so groups two and four, Google form this PDF, whatever format you want. I will put the questions directly into D2L with the Google form link as well, which shows up in a, in a notice. That's not the word. News? Wherever the front, wherever it shows up at the front of the news. Anyways, this thing. I promise okay. we're not laughing at you. It totally. Sure, sure. It, I, I, there was a funny joke on Google here that was, you know, Mobile mm -hmm. cast, class canceled. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, we're only two weeks too late for that. Okay, so new news. It'll show up in news. Okay, so for groups two and four, I recommend that you complete that right now since it's like it's fresh. You guys are done. You can breathe. You can enjoy Thursday's class. Groups one and three. If you have any um, last minute comments, concerns, like class is over, so you guys can stay logged in and ask me questions. Um, go complete the Google form on your own. You're, you're free. All right. So thank you to all those who presented tonight. It, was, it went really well. Super impressed. Um, yeah. Okay. Half done. I can't find the Google Doc thing. In the, well, I haven't shared it in the chat yet. Oh, okay. She's, it's yeah, she's, in the presentation. She's I was slacking. looking. What what presentation is it in? So in her, her content under assignments, mm -hmm. and okay. specifically in debri de debates criteria. I don't remember. I just shared this. Oh goodness! There it is. Send. Oh my God! It's the only button on the whole page. Oh. When we um, access it from the PowerPoint, it shows up as my address. So I guess we just have to make sure it's like on the Google form. It says my name on it. Yeah. So the Google form recognizes you. Oh, that that's a good clarification. You need to be logged into your Laurentian account, and it'll show up as you. So I know that you answered it. Okay. So like if Jesse goes from the chat, it she just needs to double check that it says her email address at the top. It should open up in all of your okay. accounts. Like it should automatically recognize that you're in your Laurentian account and it'll oh. say, oh, this isn't you, switch account. Okay. So as an example, I have three 
right? I have Google Gmail accounts, right? So it can register and any one of those three, she won't recognize anything but the LU account. So you have okay. to make sure you're in your LU setting and not one of your, if you have another one. So it's in the chat as well, but yeah, so it, the, it'll rec it'll automatically okay. register your LU account if you're logged into it. And that's my way of knowing who's answered it. So I'm not asking, that's why I'm not asking for your name because it'll recognize your uh, Laurentian info. So it's in the chat now, it's on D2L. I will make a news bulletin, whatever the word is, to put it in D2L. Um, otherwise, thanks again, tonight was awesome. And uh, I will stay logged on in case anyone has any last minute questions or concerns. Otherwise, go enjoy the gorgeous spring weather. Have a good night and I will see you all Thursday. Don't worry, I get to enjoy.